Get brew. We've only had her for probably nearly three weeks. Right, okay. So you got her during all this during the pandemic. Yep. Yep. Only because we've had dogs, we've had a righteous pup before. Yep. And we've maintained a sponsorship role with them. We've done some sponsorship for them in the past. Yep. And so I've constantly hearing from them and then through the pandemic they needed people to look after more dogs yep. because they normally have them and they get school groups in that work with them but they haven't been able to come in so they had all these dogs that didn't have anyone working with them. Yep. Fostered before, how many? Yeah, you? we had just one We and that was the year they very first started and right. that was, but they were for guide dogs. Oh, okay. So they were just sort of a training agency and they took on a litter for guide dogs. Now our dog failed because she had skin allergies yep. and they couldn't give her onto a beautifully trained dog, which we then kept for 12 years. Right. <laughs> so we ended up with a pretty good Labrador out of that. Yep. So she died about two years ago yep. and we haven't had a dog since then. And then pandemic came and our daughter who lives in Lara is physically disabled. She's in a wheelchair yep. and she's always wanted a dog and wanted to get a puppy and has been putting, but I've always said to her, you can't handle the puppy. You do it anyway. I want a dog. So anyway, behind her back, I went and organised a dog for her through Joe. I rang her up and said, you wouldn't have a dog we could give to Alex. Yep. Sure, no problems. Yeah, come and get one. So we yep. took one down to Alex first. Um, she's a four-year-old bitch, she's older, and she's a breeding bitch, she's not for whatever, so they can farm her out to anyone, and just when they want to have a, another litter, yep. they bring her back. Right. Yeah, so that's how we sort of got re-involved with having dogs, was more to get Alex a dog, right. and then we ended up with one too. Yeah. <laughs> so what are your responsibilities, I guess, in terms of training and preparing for um, a lot of it is probably more, this one's been funny because she's already a year old, yep. the first one we had from eight weeks old, So, but they actually went out there every day to train. This one's sort of come to us with basic training, but hasn't had a lot of social stuff. So a lot of the stuff is socialising them, mm -hmm. because these dogs are going to be autism dogs which means they've got to be used to kids, they've got to be used to things being thrown at them and whatever, so um, it's a socialisation, but it's also enforcing the training, your basic sit, stay, toileting um, and whatever, and developing confidence in them. So you, your responsibilities are basically to care for them, socialise them um, and just look after their well-being, but also you you are expected to do, and this is new and I haven't finished it, they have an online tri training mm -hmm. program that shows you what the instructions are, and you've got to get them used to using their commands. Right. So, you know, they have specific commands that they use, mm -hmm. and they're the ones that you have to follow. Yep, okay. So you kind of touched on it before, but I guess your decision to be involved with Righteous Pops was based on, what would you say? In the outset, from 12 years ago, we had two girls at high school. Mm -hmm. They We'd had a Labrador before, and we saw an ad in the paper to have one of these. Um, and we pursued it more from an interest point of view, yeah. doing something different, you mm -hmm. know, haven't done it before. And so that's when we got involved with the first one. Um, but to have this second one, being in lockdown had a fair bit to do with it. You yeah. know, we originally, we weren't going to get another dog because we were travelling so much and we were doing a lot of different things. Well, then being in lockdown, it sort of changed and it was something different again. It was a make you walk, make you go and do yeah. other things. So it was deemed a good time to get another dog. Yeah. And it's, it's a dog we could give back, mm -hmm. you know. It was It's flexible if, if we find we're not able to care for her or whatever for some reason or our situation changes, she can go back to them. 
you're not stuck with it for 12 years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the, and that was the same with Alex down there, is that if she found she couldn't cope with the dog, she has a partner and whatever, but he'd never had a dog before. He'd never had a pet. He was very much on the thing, and I didn't want them to get a dog and then all of a sudden find yeah. out that he didn't like it. Yep. You know, as it's turned out, he just loves it and mm -hmm. he's all in, but yep. you know, it may not have been that way. So we felt this was a really good option to try before you buy. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. To host a dog and see whether that's what you really want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess on that topic with the whole social isolation thing, when I was talking to Jo yesterday, she was saying that this whole isolation thing is kind of everyday life for kids with autism. Mm -hmm. So I guess, do you think with this added quarantine, it's obviously escalated this isolation for these people? Would you say that I guess it's more important now than ever that these dogs are being trained to help these kids through? Yeah, this one, you're sort of thinking, oh, this is this dog's gonna be such a nice dog for him to snuggle up to. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, these kids, if this dog becomes their only friend, which she'd be quite happy with, she'd be quite happy rolling around on the floor mm -hmm. with a kid and be their friend, then that'd be a great. She follows me around like I am the best thing since last spring. Yep. And if that kid then feels that I am that the one thing in this person's this dog's life, then you can see how it would really be a benefit and be a bridge. Yeah, definitely. For the, for the children. Yeah, I guess this is kind of what you were saying. Like, how does it make you feel that one day Brie will be helping these kids? Yeah, she'll, she'll, be, life, she'll yeah. be great at stuff like that. She, um, I find out because of the light, the way she's been brought up out in the kennels and that, she apparently has had some time with the family. She associates pretty well with kids. And she associates well with other dogs. It's probably other adults that she is wary of. Yep. Um, so I can, we have um, a neighbour with three kids and they come up to visit Brie. They take her out in the backyard and play with her So because we've got no kids here. So they're always up here playing with her and so it's good that, and you can already see that, you know, down the track she loves to fetch, she'll fetch till the cows come home. So, you yep. know, if, if a kid with autism wants to just sit and throw a ball, she'll just keep bringing it back and bringing it back. Yeah. I was thinking about doing this. Would you, what would you say to them? Would you highly recommend it? Or obviously you need to be prepared. You have to be yeah. prepared for giving it up. Yeah. And I think on the first instance, when we first had one, that was probably harder. But having done it before, and having other dogs in the family that our kids have now got, I would find it easier to give up yep. um, at the end. But uh, yeah, I think it, it's easier now to be able to give it up than, than down the track because you do get very attached to them. Yep. Um, we've had a, a very good ongoing relationship with Righteous Pups. Um, we've been involved in, cha in charity days that they run and charity golf days and, and stuff and you know, we like to support local charities and not just see money go out of our region. Um, they're involved with uh, our work for the dollars go out there and, and help. Well, they did, I'm not even sure if that's still a scheme, but they used to use a lot of work for the doll people and the local schools and special needs kids that come in and work with the uh, uh, work with the dogs on site. They, um, they get kids from the special ed programs and stuff to come out and work with the dogs out there. So um, it's certainly opened up an avenue for ki for those sort of kids to get as you know some training yeah. and and some build some worth and of themselves. Yeah. So it's sort of a bit of twofold. It yeah. helps both sides. Yeah. Um, they do it on a on a shoestring budget. You know, it's all it's all um, local money, and, and that's the good thing. And I, I think it's hard. I think there's getting more and more of these dog or pet charity things yep. coming up. So, you know, I think their their job's getting harder to source money. 
Um, because it's local, sometimes it is easier to pitch it um, as a local thing and keep the money. They've got pretty good presence in Bendigo, yep. um, even though they do go outside Bendigo now. Um, they've had very good support from you know some of the big businesses, so just hope they can keep going yeah, through all of this. That's yeah. the that's the that's the big thing.